to be up here uh, to present as a part of our venue for the Olakai 7th Annual Ho'alea. And in my talk today, um, I'll be covering three exciting topics that will hopefully help, help you in your training tomorrow on the race course and in life. And that's my desire for you. Uh, but before I get started, I want to thank a lot of people here that have helped me in my career and in my life. And uh, who didn't make it today, I'm sorry to say, is uh, Wendell Devera from Chai Paddle. He's a, a real good friend of mine. He's also my client. And um, he's helped me a lot as a mentor and a good friend. Also, Milton, who is not here but probably getting his ski ready for tomorrow. He's been a real great ocean shepherd and a gentleman that has helped a lot of us. And um, he's another person that I, if I had to see a face, I hope it's his strong face and arm pulling me out. <laughs> and then a couple very near and dear to me, uh, Stephen and Kathy Ross, that they're, they're my peeps, and I really appreciate you all. My coach, Jeremy Riggs, um, really grateful for Jeremy's knowledge. Nisan Salamanov at the Nash Tent has got a smile so bright. I won't sing, but you get the drift. Um, so I'll get started and talk about three topics today. And topic number one will first be how to be an all-dimensional paddler. Topic number two will be how to avoid and recognize some of the common injuries in stand-up paddling in OC1. And topic number three, the best for last, is how you can improve your mental game and your mental toughness. It's not all about who can paddle the fastest. It's about how can you use your brain in a smart way to be disciplined and strong. So at first, Zane, come on up. I'd like to introduce to you my willing assistant, uh, Zane Morosco. Give it up for Zane. Put your hands together. He is a, doing his first eight-mile Olakai run. He's been training in seriously intense conditions, and I'm really proud of Zane. And uh, we've been practicing today, so I told Zane if I go down, he comes down with me. So, <laughs> second race. Oh, second race. Excuse moi. His second race. All right. Thanks, Matthew, his dad, and Jen. Okay. First topic is um, how to be an all-dimensional paddler. You know, in our lives, we, we walk in one direction. We surf maybe in different directions. We train and paddle in one direction. But I want you to start thinking about the ocean and your body in many dimensions. Um, my background is in orthopedic sports surgery, and it was a great experience for many years, um, being a patient, unfortunately, many times, uh, but also helping the patients out of surgery, helping the surgeons in surgery. I have also was a volunteer for many years in the triage tent at the Ironman, and I swear I've seen it all. It's like a SWAT team. We only have 10 beds. we got to get them in and out. And as a trainer and athlete, it's really helped me increase my dimension in my world in training and helping clients and people. Um, and my background is also physical therapy. So I am not a doctor. I don't know everything. And I really enjoy learning from my friends who can teach me more, so where I'm always willing to learn more. So. If I can give you any jewel that you take with you on your board or in your boat tomorrow, I hope I can give you something that's worthwhile. So whatever you grab today, let me know. I, I hope I can help you. Um, so back to topic number one, being an all-dimensional paddler. When we look at the water, I want you to start thinking of a field of blue. In surgery, we only have a field of green. It's about uh, maybe five inches wide, and that is our entire focus. You have a huge opportunity tomorrow and on Sunday to open your brain and open your mind on a whole different level. But what you have to do is how can your body respond to the three types of swells we have out there. You know, we have three types of swell, traditionally the trade swell, a real ground swell, which we had in 2013, and then you get the island backwash. That's another challenge. So how do you get your body to respond to these new dimensions? Not every stroke is going to be the same stroke. You strive to get your boat and your board in rhythm but what happens if you have a disconnect in your brain, your brain fails you, then ultimately your body fails. You can save a lot more energy by opening up your mind and training your body on land if we have another dimension to train in. And I'm going to get to that in just a moment. So please nod all your heads and tell me you understand exactly what I say. Okay, because this is Susie Says, not Simon Says. Um, so getting on with that. So again, think about how your body reacts to a problem. Let's say you're getting ready to hula, you're going to get dumped off your board. You can save a lot of energy by not letting that happen. If you do, you're going to lose five minutes minimum, and your head's going to be all scrambled because you're freaking out and you missed the bump or the glide. So if I can get start thinking of power coming from the center of your body, your arms and your blade, 
is just an accessory that guides the board and pulls the boat or the board through the water. Would you all agree? So if you can train your brain to connect to your powerhouse, which is right here, an extension of your brain to your obliques, to the hips, to the boat or the bo board, to the paddle, you're going to be golden. <clears throat> so my desire is to help you strengthen that connection of your brain away from your center of effort. We, we are all tied up and caught up in right here. The power is here. How we get that power to the blade is key. So I'm going to teach you today how to load and stress your body as if you're sitting in your boat or on your board accordingly. If you can get all the fine muscles of the obliques, and if you even know what your obliques are, you should be paddling with them. So I'm hoping to entertain you today. I have two wonderful willing volunteers, Dave Kalama and Connor Baxter, um, who have uh, promised to be my models. And they don't have to talk, they just have to look good and perform. So they're used to that. Um, and I really appreciate them coming up. So I have Zane to help me quickly. And uh, the first exercise we're going to do um, with progressions accordingly, we're going to move two BOSUs out in the center of the stage here. Zane, if you can grab two of those, please, and put them in the center. I don't have a cordless mic, which I thought I was going to have, but um, I'm going to do my best. Um, first thing we're going to do is think about how do we load the hip. Your hips are a powerhouse connected to your deep pelvic floor muscles and your obliques. So if I can grab that paper, thank you so much. Part of my talk is adapting to change, and I have to do that a lot today. That's all good. <laughs> okay, thank you, Zane. And uh, what we're going to do here is try to mimic the stress that you feel on your board. So when you are applying pressure to rail to rail or in your boat, you know exactly what to do. If you're off a millimeter, an inch, or half a foot, you're going down, you're wasting time, and you're wasting energy. So if I can load your joints accordingly, and you can really get your brain to connect, I guarantee you you're going to have a 25% better outcome tomorrow. So I'm going to do my best to start with a simple progression and how we can load our hips to give you more power ultimately because your paddle is an accessory to the power you have in your brain, your obliques, and your hips. Your femur is a huge bone here. All the finite muscles help you load that power. And as you're opening up your chest and transferring that power to the water, you want to maximize that opportunity. And I'm going to show you how to do that. So first things first. Um, I am going to just kind of hop on one leg, side to, side to side, no load. My dimension now is 9 to 3 o'clock. I'm 12 o'clock. If I'm paddling this way, I'm looking for bumps this way, I got a whole field of opportunity to get it right, and I want to get it right fast. I want my body to respond to any changing motion that might be happening around me, in my boat, or on my board. So what I'm going to do now is have a load saying, can you please grab the 8-pound medicine ball for me? Thank you so much. And Zane, if you could hold this microphone still. Thank you. Okay, I'm, I'm uh, thank you. This is so sweet. I'm going to use an eight pound medicine ball. This is an awesome way to load your joints from your obliques, deep pelvic floor muscles, hip, knee, and ankle. As the boat is changing, the board is changing, every micro moment counts. Thank you, Zane. So I'm gonna go from side to side. Loading my joint this way, changing my center of effort this way, take a stroke this way. Now I'm feeling more power coming out of my body to the paddle. And this way. I'm no longer training in one dimension. I'm using more opportunity. Thank you, Zane. Is that better? My next progression will be a much more difficult medicine ball on the ground. Imagine you're on your board, and all of a sudden, you misplace your paddle. A wave comes up behind you, smacks you in the back of the head. You don't want to go down. You want to keep going. How can you load your joints of the hip, the ankle, and the knees so that you have success when you purchase your blade properly? Any angle that's incorrect as you're paddling, you're going to lose a lot of power. So we can change your brain thinking to the whole field of motion that we have from a field of nine to three. You want that bump? you can get that bump, and here's a way to do it. First progression is no weight, I'm losing my breath, and then we'll use a, a medicine ball, and then we're going to imagine that we are in a canoe. This particular exercise applies more to stand-up paddlers, so please bear with me and thanks, hold on. Okay. Starting here, I don't wanna look, I wanna trust my brain. I'm gonna go side to side and load the joint, here and here, this way, and this way. 
here and here. Okay. Just like that. I can also change the angle of the BOSU going here to here. Always looking for the bump. I'm hunting, I'm looking. I want my brain to connect to what I'm doing here. Just like that. This way and that way. Back on the board, nose of the board. Back of the board, nose of the board. I want that. I'm going to go here to get it and then there. Okay. <laughs> Next up, much more difficult with weight. Thanks for being so patient and listening so attentively. It makes my day. <laughs> we can load the joint and stress the hip away from your center of effort. Imagine this being the rail of your board. You want to apply maximum pressure to the paddle to get that stroke. And if the water is changing, how are you going to do that? How can we trick the brain to respond accordingly? So if we can load the joint and mimic what we do on the ocean, you will have an amazing success. So starting here, loading the joint this way and that way. Here and here. This way and that way. Okay. And Connor, would you like to give this a try? <laughs> give it up for Connor Baxter. First, <laughs> first we'll do one simple progression without the medicine ball. So if you don't mind Connor standing up on the BOSU. Okay, and we're going to hop to that BOSU with one leg and side to side. Try to look forward and don't look down. Let's have a goal of five. Two, three, four, and five. Okay, now close your eyes. I'm kidding. Okay. <laughs> okay. okay, and now we're going to load Connor's body accordingly. His center of effort will be changing and the load on his hips. So please stand up on the BOSU, Connor. Thank you and right to left real big, load it up, move the ball with you, right to left and left and right, five more please and go, one, two, loading, three, four, excellent, all right, give Connor a hand, thank you. Have you been training with somebody? That's good, okay. Thanks so much Connor, we spared you Dave on that one. Okay, so do you guys all understand the concept? Paddling in all dimensions, seeing a field of blue, you have a huge opportunity, not just in front of you. If you train and load the body in all dimensions, again, I guarantee you a whole different outcome tomorrow this weekend. So think of training every day in different ways, in different angles. So I think that will help you tremendously. Um, okay, back to my notes. I really appreciate that. Okay, now we're going to talk about canoe paddlers and um, trying to, Wendell DeVera came to me and said, Susie, I want you to make me faster sitting in a canoe. And I said, okay, I got to think about that. But together we came up with a few things and uh, he's just a joy to train with. And so this time we are going to load up the hips, which also get fatigued in any long distance training. So if you're a stand-up paddler, you know what I'm talking about, and you're paddling from Molokai to Oahu, things get tight. And so if we can allow the hip to open more and not let the hip flexors take over, you'll have a better outcome. You won't get as much fatigued. So this one will take a little bit of patience and a little bit of practice, but it's more about training your brain and loading files in your brain. So when you need a file in a difficult situation, your hip calls on that file and hopefully it's there, right there. And that's what training is all about, brain training. Okay, if I could have Dave Kalama join me, I would greatly appreciate it. Yeah. <laughs> You're so cute. Shoes off, please, Dave. Thank you. <laughs> Such a sport. I, I, I have waited for this. I have waited for this day for a long time. Um, we are going together to, we're going to kneel with one knee on the BOSU gracefully, and uh, I won't kick you if you don't kick me. So right knee, just like that, and I want you to face me, so we're going to go like this. Okay. Very nice. And I also have nicknamed this exercise Shake and Bake, and I hope we're still friends when we're done. We're not going to throw that yet. Okay. So here we go. So one knee together. And I want you to bring your foot right here with me, Dave, like this. And just trust yourself and trust me. And I want you to think about what's happening here. So try to lift up that foot and just balance. It's very good for his first time. So what we're doing now with Dave is we're strengthening, shaking, shaking and baking. We are building up all the hip flexors that he needs when he's paddling. And in the canoe, so just relax. Have a little bend in your hip. It's all here. Very good for your first time. All right. 
Excellent. All right, give her a round of applause for a day. <laughs> Such a sport, thank you. Okay, Con, you're up next. Thank you. Okay, left leg for Connor. Thank you, Dave. Stand by, Dave, we're not done. So left knee for Connor. I'm gonna make it a little more difficult on Connor, if that's okay. Of course, he's such a sport. Thank you again, Dave. Okay, so I want you to relax. Keep a little bend in the hip and bring your foot up here with me. Okay, hands away from your body. Okay, it's all in your brain. You're doing a great job, kid. Okay, amazing. You guys have both done a great job. Just to even the playing field, please stand up. Let's do the right side together. Okay. Such a sport. I'm so grateful. Thanks, Connor. Okay. And balance with me. Okay, I'm very serious when I say this. Um, when I count to three, I want you to close your eyes. Ready? And one, two, three. Excellent. Okay. <laughs> I didn't plan on that, but when you change the field that you're playing on, you have a different dimension to think about. It's a great way to train your brain. So let's have a little more fun. And uh, Zane, can you please grab the microphone? And then Marley, can you hand me that six pound medicine ball? Can you lift that buddy and bring it over to me? Thank you. And then Connor, can you go back on the BOSU? Okay. You trust me? Yeah. Okay. All right. So we're gonna play a little catch. This is a, four, a six pound medicine ball. And I'm gonna be nice to Connor and Connor's gonna be nice to me. And we're gonna play a little game of toss and this is going to really change up the hips and the obliques here we're going to go just like this okay so scoot back a little bit that way okay so now we're going to load up the hip ready okay catch that okay back to me here perfect nice work okay so nice to me okay <laughs> and Excellent. All right. Give it up for Connor. Thank you. That was good. Oops. Thanks so much. Okay. 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 One more for the books on this exercise, and I'll try to keep moving quickly. I know I don't have a lot of time, but I have a lot to share. Okay. So stand up paddling and OC1 paddlers. You got the drift. Changing up the dimension in your hips and strength. Moving your center of effort. Looks like this again. Watch me paddle now. Can you hold that for me, Zane, here? So this way and this way. See, I shake too. And here, oh, thanks, Zane. And this way, I'm shaking too. Okay, this way, moving my center of effort, focus on the bump right here. I want power on that paddle, but it's gotta come from somewhere else. And my brain's gonna help me just like that. All right, thanks. All right, thanks so much. Okay, there are a million exercises I can show you. That's just one. Okay, the next one, I think I'll have Marley help me because he's so cute and patient. You want to help me, Marley? Okay. So, Zane, can you please bring me that cushion and the other one? Okay. So, Marley is six, and Marley paddled three hot long miles with about 55 of us last Sunday, and he did a great job. So, Marley! <laughs> bring it over here, Zane. He's got wonderful parents, so good job, Shelly. Okay, Marley, I know you want to sit on that very badly, so go ahead. Okay. <laughs> These are called the Higonti Flow Cushions. And when we talk about finding power in your stroke, whether it be in a boat or stand up paddleboard, not everybody knows how to turn on their obliques. You can save a lot of energy if you just paddle with the other part. And that would be the core. The core, not just your abs, it's the hip flexors that tend to turn on way too much when you're sitting in the boat for a long time. They also turn on way too much that causes your back to hurt and what we can need to do now is trick the body and stress the body from the inside out as if you're in the boat or on the board so Marley if please don't fall back okay saying could you move this bosu for me so he doesn't fall okay so be real careful with me Marley ready so all we're gonna do he's so cute <laughs> he's just gonna sit here with me sit a little more forward hun go put your butt right there okay please lift up your legs let's hang out all right, hands off your body, hands just like that. Pretty amazing. So technically, if it was not Marley, it probably doesn't feel as much as we feel as we get older. But right now, my hips want to take over. We don't want that to happen. You want to keep your hips nice and loose and let the deep core muscles help you, especially your abs. All right, Marley, good job. That's so cute. I don't think some of the big people would do so well. 
Okay, Zane, next up, I'd like you to bring over that eight pound medicine ball for me, please. Okay, so now I'm gonna demonstrate how we can change this dimension in training by loading up, thank you, by loading up my abs. As I move the medicine ball away from my abs, I'm going to simultaneously turn off my left oblique and my right oblique. By doing so, I can do that, deliver more power with each stroke in the boat or on the board. So watch this, please. Okay, eight pounds. Center of effort here, moving it away from me here, stressing out and burning out that oblique, focusing on my oblique. Thank you, Zane, you're so good. Okay, and this side, please. <laughs> on this side on the left, this oblique is firing like crazy. And then back to my center, and now back to the right. You can use an eight pound dumbbell, works very well too. You can also progress on the BOSU. Thank you so much, thanks. Okay, all right, so. Thank you, Zane. Thanks, my wonderful assistant. So that is one way that we can uh, change our dimension in our paddling is building up the oblique muscles, and there are a thousand ways we can do that. So I'm going to save the best for last, and I actually might have uh, Dave come up and help me with the board, if you don't mind. Um, now, this is something that uh, I should have brought my helmet for, but I'm going to do it. So this will be a real crowd pleaser. I'm not going to make Dave do it. I'm going to do it. So if we can bring this board, Dave, up, put it on top of this cushion, and I think I'd like to face that way, put the tail on this side. So what I'm going to do first, I'm going to surf this board just like that. Thank you so much. Okay. After I do this, and I'm still alive, uh, I'm going to pretend that we're in a canoe and show you an amazing way to train as you're in the boat. So this is a great thing you can do. This cushion max inflates at about two feet. Anything bigger will make it pop. So I'm going to do my very best and make it look graceful. My goal here is to burn out my hip flexors, get my obliques to fire, and help my brain get a grip on how I can be a stronger paddler. So are we all getting this concept? Is this helping? Great. Okay. So Zane, thank you. Okay. Wish me luck. And do you want my guitar if I go? Okay. <laughs> okay. So here we go. This is talking, I'm talking about, this is a lot of action moving. Kind of way to get comfortable with this. You can do a little rail, a rail grab to help you up. And then your goal is to get your body very quiet. I did this a few times. I hope I don't eat it, but if I do, I'll be all right. Okay, so a little bit of pressure here. I am gonna grab the rail. I'm gonna give it a little juice. Just taking every ounce of my brain which seems to be okay today. I'm gonna trust myself, get my body very loose. So how can I make this more difficult? Quickly, Connor. Wait. Yes, then what? Uh, Close your eyes. eyes. Yes, very good. We're not gonna do that today. <laughs> All right, everybody, thank you. So, <laughs> woo, all right. I'm exhausted. Okay. So next up, <laughs> so I'm showing you the hardest thing first, and I'll, I'll show you the easiest after with the board. But it's a, so now everything's firing. My brain is super stoked. Pretend you're in the canoe. This is really great to get a feel of what it's like. I recommend also, if you're ever training and you're new to downwind uh, paddling, to get in a canoe with a two-man canoe, have somebody like Dave sit behind you, really help you read the bumps. It makes a world of difference. If you've never been in a canoe and it's rough out there, this is a great way to try it. You guys want to try this? It's a very tippy boat. Here we go. Giddy up, huh? Okay. So my goal is to get this boat very quiet. Soft hands, soft mind, 
smart brain, all dimensional training. My field is huge. It's all around me, just don't look behind you. Call upon the muscles that will help you keep everything quiet and moving fast. Wendell DeVera told me a great tip. Can I have my microphone, Zane? Thank you. This is actually really fun. Um, Wendell DeVera gave me a great tip the other day. I was kind of stressing out in the harbor and he goes, Susie, didn't anybody tell you the secret? And I said, what's the secret, Wendell? He goes, you gotta paddle slow to paddle fast. And then it reminded me of Dave too, because that is so true and it's such a great concept. So if anybody would like to try this, you guys are welcome to, Dave's saying no, okay. But do you understand the concept? Yes, is it, hel is it helpful? So instead of training in one way, instead of paddling one way, if your boat skids or your board cavitates, now you got a new weapon and I hope it helps. So, all right, thanks everybody. And now we gotta talk about injuries. Okay, thanks Zane. Okay, I do need Dave for one more thing. It's not as embarrassing as the first, I promise. Okay, okay, so uh, can you grab the board, Dave? Or, yeah, Dave will, will come up. All right, thanks for your patience. This is uh, really hard to download 13 years of my experience into 30 minutes, so I'll, I'm gonna go as fast as I can. I need my notes so I don't get too lost. And I really appreciate the pros helping me out. It means so much, so. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna talk about is injuries and stand-up paddling and OC1. And I'm not a doctor, so please consult with your physician if you have any real serious issues that uh, don't be stubborn to go get it checked out. Um, stand-up paddling lends to all kinds of overuse injuries. And as a trainer, I work with a lot of physicians as well, and clients and myself, I've been injured. And I'm going to mention the top five in order of commonality that I'm seeing in my practice and with friends. Um, the first is shoulder, obviously, overuse, rotator cuff muscles, um, down the line, literally uh, bicep tendonitis, we get some numbing, hands go to sleep, not a good thing. Second would be, um, or third, um, golfer's elbow or tennis elbow, now becoming paddler's elbow. I get emails every week on this. Uh, medial would be inside the elbow, lateral on the outside. Extensors get real sore. I'll show you a great exercise in a moment for that. Thanks, Zane. Um, back muscles, low back, we all know it. Canoe paddlers especially have a real challenge with low back. And believe it or not, a lot of OC1 paddlers complain to me about um, shin splints, calves cramp cramping up from oversteering, not being warmed up properly. Um, so in my talk, I'm going to give you a few examples on how to manage and train appropriately so you can have um, less injuries. And you might be coming off an injury right now. You might be Really frustrated while you're not getting better but like anything you got to train your brain you got to have patience and and be uh, really diligent about that so right away um, I'm going to um, bring Dave up here just as an example because he is so powerful and then you're free to go after this day thanks so much um, we're going to talk about good paddling posture and bad paddling paddling posture and it's probably uh, fair to say that Dave is very powerful in both disciplines of SUP and OC1. When I look at a person and a friend, I have a different pair of eyes. I'm always looking for things that I can make functionally better and stronger. Um, when I look at a person who is practicing their posture, it makes me really happy because you have to really practice at it. And we all can be slouching and tired and whatnot. So when I look at Dave, um, he's a prime example of a lot of power. And uh, he has all the great qualities of a paddler, but also ones that stand out to me. So how we can improve Dave and open his chest up, get his hands softer and have a better experience, and this is all for you, and I'm not picking on Dave in any way. I just wanna give you a real life example of most paddlers, when I see them standing around, they often tend to be really protracted forward, which Dave is not, real short pectoral wall muscles, super strong shoulders, and the most common thing I see, which you may not even notice, is shoulders will round forward. And if I can see the backs of your hands, that's not a good thing. Scalenes get real tight. Your scalenes are these long muscles that attach to your first and third rib cage. Hip flexors are tight. You might have your butt sticking out, short hamstrings, tight hip flexors. So if I could change one thing in your world, it would be your posture. And so Dave is a, a great specimen to have an example up here. He's got a very strong back, a very strong chest, 
and uh, he's presenting very well. So I'm really stoked. I don't have to do a lot of fixing. So thank you. But what? Well, hold on. You're not done. Hold on. <laughs> so, so what we can all do together? If I could please have you join me. Um, I'd like everybody in the chair to please stand up. Everybody on the grass, please stand up if you want to learn something good. So um, if you can think about this when you're hanging out at the bank or standing in line at the fish market, um, I would love for you to have really good posture. And uh, Connor, you can help come too. So this would be great. Thanks, guys. I just want you to see the pros in action. So um, in my practice, I have a term that I call holding the money. We all like money, right? Okay, so, so if we can think of a $100 bill, if I could have Dave just stand facing Connor. If we could think of a $100 bill between Dave's shoulder blades, and I'll catch the change too, um, he will be a very balanced trainer. And I'll have Dave face the Olakai sign, so face this way. So what I'm talking about here are the shoulder blades and the traps and the rhomboids here. Again, Dave's shoulders, he's really conscientious of his posture, and I really appreciate that. His hands are facing outward. Connor's been working on his posture too. He puts his back through a lot of misery. So Connor has a nice long wingspan. The pecs look good there. So everybody please, so thank you Dave, now face the audience. I want you to stand up real tall, chest out. So imagine you're kissing your shoulder blades together. Don't feel like you're puffing your chest out, but I'd like you to have really soft hands and try to relax your neck and try to breathe. Okay, wiggle your right ear. I'm kidding, okay. No. <laughs> Can you wiggle your ears? No. Okay. It's such a sport. Okay, don't. Yeah, that feels good. Okay, so chest out. Lengthen here the pectoral wall. Give your chest a break. Give your neck a break. Let the upper back take over. Kiss your shoulder blades together. Okay, and this is the only reason why I have Dave up here, but he doesn't know this yet. So I want you to kiss your shoulder blades together and then kiss the person next to you. <laughs> oh, thank you. <laughs> that was such a trick. I've been working on that for a week. Okay. You're such a sport. Thank you. Okay, you can relax, and you are excused. Thank you for helping me today. Thank you. I got them. Okay. <laughs> Dave, I love you. Thanks. Okay. I know. Okay, so but I'm serious. Uh, you got to hold the money. Okay, don't be poor. Keep a nice posture. I was going to really embarrass him, but I'm going to save that. We have a G audience. Okay. All right. Thanks, Dave, and thanks, Connor. That was awesome. Um, getting back to your training. Um, so good posture. And uh, holding the money, retraction, kissing the shoulder blades. It's, it's a really important thing. So now next up, I'm going to have uh, Zane help me in an exercise that will help train your rotator cuff muscles so you can avoid some of the overuse injuries I'm talking about. So Zane and I have been practicing. This is called a, sh a single shoulder press. I will perform this exercise with Zane helping me, standing up on the box. This will make sure that your shoulder blades remain intact take some of the load off your chest, your scalenes, and your neck. So Zane's going to help me out here, and if I go down, then Zane comes with me, but we've been practicing here. Marley, can you help me a second, honey? Okay, thank you, sweetheart. Put that right here. Make sure you put the shoe on there. Okay, really sweetie. Okay, so Zane, you ready? Okay, so if I pull Zane down, this is going to be bad, but I'm not going to. Okay, so before I get started, this is a single shoulder press in retraction while you're holding the money. Smooth and controlled form. The range of motion is very small. Try to have a really soft neck, and this is what you should do on both sides. You can't overdo this. There's a thousand exercises I can show you, but this is one of my favorites. Okay, here we go. So right there, and up, okay. Okay, so I have a medium gauge tubing. My stance is a staggered stance. I call this the tango position. If I bring my pelvic tilt forward here, shoulder up, Zane, you with me? You're so good. Okay. I'm not trying to pull him off, but I'm going to kiss my shoulder blades together, and I'm only going to go as far as I can manage good form, keep my elbow up, and return. The whole while, I'm squeezing my shoulder blades together. Typically, you're stronger on one side or the other. You could do about two sets of 12. I would do this three times a week. Okay? Thank you, Zane. Very good. We did it together, kid. All right, thanks for being patient with all my notes here. Um, moving on to another exercise. Let me see. Uh, where's my cordless mic? Um, ah, this is a great one. Okay, so we talk about having good posture as a paddler and opening up your chest. Can you grab that paper for me, Zane? Okay, so next up, we need to find a way to stretch the pectoral wall. And I have Joel. Do you want to come up with me? Okay, Joel Edwards flew in from 
Gabaldi's. My former client and good friend is here. And uh, people call these the misery sticks, but they're actually very good for you. Um, these are called self manufacture rollers. Thank you, Zane. Thank you, Joel. And I, I have a great story about Joel. Um, he had just finished crossing the channel from the Big Island to Maui, remember that? And you came in the studio, and he was totally spent. And I got him on this thing, and I swear he was crying. But we did it. We got through it, right? Awesome. Okay, say hi, Joel. Hello, everyone. <laughs> this is Joel. So uh, what we're going to do now is something you can do every day. I recommend you do this before you paddle and after you paddle. It'll make your lives a whole lot better and your posture. These muscles really need some relaxation. This is a great way to do it. So I will sit sideways here. The black one is much harder and tense. Sit on your tailbone, but do not squish your little facets on the bottom of your low back. I'm going to roll back this way. Make sure my back is flat, pelvic tilt forward. I'm just going to open up my chest like this, and I could stay here all day. So just by opening my chest right here, keeping my pelvic tilt flat, I'm going to get a lot of relief in my neck, and my chest will thank me later and will improve my posture. Like anything, you have to practice, so please practice this. This is called a nice chest opener. Okay, woo, there's no graceful dismount. How are you doing, Joel, good? Okay, so stay where you are. So now we're going to move on to rolling out the lats. The lats are what pull your body and your board through the water. If we can roll out your lats, you'll have a bigger range of motion. You'll have more inertia. You'll have more power to the blade and a, just, just a whole other outcome. So this can be painful. I've done a lot of videos on this, and um, there is uh, just no way you just got to get through it. So what we're, we're trying to do is reset the muscle uh, in the lats. And as we roll here, remember this, Joel? Okay. <laughs> It's been a long time since I've seen Joel. And what I'm doing here now is applying pressure in the auxiliary department, and I'm rolling out my lats here, trying to find a sweet spot. And then when you find it, you have to hold it and just kind of breathe into it. It's a great way to improve your posture and kind of get all those knots out of there. I highly recommend this. How are you doing, Joel? I love it. It hurts, it, it hurts so good, like that song. OK. <laughs> Very good. So you can stay there, Joel, if you want to roll out the other side, too. And I'll keep talking. So lots of things you can do to improve your posture and kind of roll on back to good health. Okay, so let's talk about, uh, thank you, Joel. Very nice, okay, thanks for joining me. Real quick, um, low back, tight. Low back is often caused by tight hamstrings and tight hip flexors. Your hip flexors are here, your hamstrings are here, and, woo, and weak glute muscles, your butt muscles. Uh, a lot of guys in the boat and women have a lot of low back problems, uh, long distance paddlers as well. If you can learn to strengthen your abs, that's a huge factor. I've got a thousand ab exercises, but I don't have time today to show you. Um, another thing you can do is to strengthen your glutes, which is the powerhouse for everything that we do. If your glutes are weak, you're paddling an OC1, and stand-up paddling will greatly suffer. Um, last but not least, your calf muscles. Uh, people sometimes say, excuse me, my feet fall asleep. I've only heard two people say their feet have fallen asleep in a one man, which is unusual unless you're doing a big crossing. So don't forget to warm up. There are tiny little muscles along the side of your calf muscle called perennials, and they often get neglected and ignored. Also, you can think about stretching out your shins here so you can alleviate some of the pressure on the back of the leg. So a great warm up to get your legs ready for race day, for stand up and canoe, be something as simple as this. I've chosen this board, it's called the Kicktail. It's the most advanced board Indo board makes. A top on an Indo board Higante cushion inflated about maybe 30%. So I'm always gonna do things a little more difficult than the next person because I love this stuff. So all I'm gonna do here is stand on this board here and get all the perennials for these little fine muscles along the inner and lateral side of your leg, whoa, <laughs> and get them warmed up just like this. It's a great exercise, and just, just simple like that. It takes a little bit of practice, so this way and that way, and that will help get your legs warmed up on that. Again, there's a thousand different exercises I can show you. This direction is obviously a little bit easier, not as exciting, but we can also do this, go medial, lateral, and front to back. Really force it forward, force it back. Your footwork on your board is critical. This would be a great exercise if you're on a new big brace down under board, just like that. Okay. All right, so that concludes topic number two on how to think about injury. If you're a really disciplined athlete, 
I think it's important that you also pack in your truck a nice ice pack, a soft pack, especially all the paddlers with shoulder problems right now. Do your body good and uh, pack in a nice soft ice pack. 10 minutes after you paddle will really help your recovery. So again, check with your physician if you have any pending issues and uh, hopefully you can paddle safer and longer. Okay, was that good? Okay. Finally, in closing, thanks for your patience. I really appreciate your attention. Uh, my favorite topic is how to be mentally tough. Um, something that I try to work on myself every day. And what I'm going to talk about next is how you can really train your brain to be a stronger paddler. And there's a lot of things that could happen tomorrow. And if I can help you pull it together so you have a better outcome in tomorrow's race and Sundays and in life, that's really my goal for you today. Um, what are you guys doing over here? <laughs> okay. So uh, to be mentally tough might mean different things to you. Um, for me, it means trying to keep it together as things change around in my environment. A lot of things are often out of our control. And if I am currently writing a book right now, and I've got two more chapters to go, uh, chapter seven is all about training the brain. And um, I've, I've interviewed a lot of very interesting, well-renowned sports psychologists. I've interviewed a few of you here as well. And it seems to me that a lot of our pro paddlers here have a very unique profile and character attribute. And they all have one thing in common. They have a very definite, identified goal. They have a mission. I study a lot about the Navy SEAL. I appreciate the Navy SEAL, what they do for our country. And I think their minds are just incredible. And uh, I know I can never be that tough, but I really admire them. Um, so if you can identify a goal, you have a mission. And in that mission, you need to be mentally tough to, to achieve that goal. And then next up, once you identify the mission, you need to have a plan. If all goes south, you break a paddle. Let's say you, you have somebody puncture your board. What's your plan B? If you can gracefully execute plan B and still keep your head together, to me, that is called mentally tough. You have to adapt to changes around you. And how you do so is what your plan B will be. So think of your, your mind as how you can execute plan A and plan B. You have to be ready. The pros do it all the time. You might have had a really bad breakfast or you ate the wrong nutrition gel and you barfed your guts out on the course and you know how are you going to deal with that you got to move on i'm guilty of getting distracted by the by the dumbest things of having my hat hurt my head or my glasses are falling off let that be a minor distraction so that's very important and then i have a funny story real quick about the m2o five minutes um <laughs> anybody met dr danger he's a real person uh dr bob arnaud um, he is a person you'll never forget. He is, uh, he's, in, he's in his own little category. He was crossing the channel last year, and I saw him at the award dinner coming across the, the galley of people, and the awards were going off, and he's got two drinks in his hand. He's got his cheek all busted up, and he's got bandages all over his leg, kind of how he rolls. That's his style. <laughs> so if, no, no offense to him. I'm not sure I want to be his patient, though. He is actually an internal medicine doc. He's an award-winning journalist. And uh, he can often be seen here uh, with a great statement on Maliko training. And the stories he's told about Syria and Iraq um, will blow your mind. But to me, that's an example of mental toughness. And what happened to him, I think it's a true story. It kind of gives me chicken skin, but it's, uh, it just shows the dynamic of the spirit and the strength of a person's soul to complete their mission. And your goal tomorrow is to complete your mission. Your goal might be to win might be just to finish, but I want you to have a plan to complete your mission. And Dr. Danger, he has a show called Dr. Danger, I'm not kidding. And uh, he uh, was on a stand around, uh, crossing the Kiabi Channel 32 miles last year. And it was a sight to behold. And uh, so he uh, is walking across the uh, award show, or the award floor, and the story goes, he fell off onto the pontoon on his boat, knocked out his tooth, okay? And here's the kind of guy he is. Somehow, he took his tooth, put it back in his head, and then the shark comes. And I'm thinking, Dr. Danger's going to take the shark out of the tooth, the tooth out of the shark's head and put it in his own, because he's kind of that way. But he made it back all the way. I forgot what his time was, but it was quite a sight to see him all busted up. He completed his mission. I'm not sure it was always smart. So I guess in my closing statement is we have to adapt and learn how to carry on, and even in the most adverse conditions. If you get scared out there tomorrow, use your brain, slow down, you're going to be okay. So how you adapt is very, very critical. 
you have a mission, you can adapt, you can get there. In my closing quote for you today, if you find yourself in any self-doubt, rid yourself of that, you can do this. And so with athletes that I train, they go to this place in the zone, and I can see it in their eyes, especially Cody Kerbox. He goes somewhere very special, and uh, that is his moment. It's kind of the sweet spot in life and the sweet spot in your sport. And so uh, I always ask him where he goes, and he doesn't know for that moment. So the greatest athletes, however, when you're in that zone, and when everything in your mind is right, you have your mission, you can adapt, that's when the most damage occurs. So when your mind is right, is when the most damage can occur because you don't, you're not thinking. So use a barometer that's smart. Be smart, know the difference between discomfort and danger. Don't put yourself or others in any danger and just uh, give it hell tomorrow. So thank you for your time. Mahalo. Thanks, Connor, and thanks, Dave Kalama, and thank you, Archie. Thank you, Susie. How's about another round of applause for Susie Cooney? What a great welcome.